Bermuda is a group of low-lying islands in the North Atlantic, located 1,000 kilometers off the east coast of the United States. Despite its location, Bermuda is often grouped with the Caribbean UK Overseas Territories as a result of its shared wildlife and ecological connections to the greater Caribbean area. Bermuda has a long history stretching back to 1503 when it was first sighted by the Spanish sea captain Juan de Bermudez, who gave his name to the islands. But the Spanish didn't settle here. It was the English who founded the first settlements in 1609, and the old capital, St. George's, is the oldest continually inhabited English town in the New World, and it's a cultural world heritage site. In the early years, the settlers had a desperate start, rocked by epidemics of yellow fever and other diseases. And the flat, low-lying islands faced a lack of fresh water. So a unique architecture style developed here, in which every square centimetre of the roofs of all of the buildings were designed to capture and collect every drop of rainwater. But the importance of the island grew with the shipbuilding industries and trade that quickly flourished here. And the islands were soon fortified. First were small forts built during the 17th century, including the Devonshire Redoubt. And then over the 18th and 19th centuries, dozens of larger fort complexes were constructed, carrying powerful cannons to protect the island. By the end of the 19th century, at least 80 forts had been built in total. The Bermudians are very proud of their history and cultural heritage. And each week, an age-old tradition of the dunking of the nagging wench is recreated for tourists. Legend on the island has it that the menfolk amongst the settlers were hassled and nagged by their wives as the men had nowhere to retreat to for a bit of peace and quiet, they built a special chair for their beloveds to teach them a lesson. The men got their peace and quiet, although I don't think that I'm brave enough to try the dunking chair on my wife. Bermuda is by far the most urbanized of all the UK overseas territories. On the main island, buildings are visible virtually across the entire landmass. This leaves little room for nature. But offshore, a series of small isolated islands reveal a glimpse of what the mainland of Bermuda might once have resembled. Here, the landscape has been sheltered from the development due to its isolation. And it's here where conservation efforts have been concentrated. This is Nonsuch Island, Bermuda's living museum, where the native wildlife of the islands survive, including native prickly pears, wild poncetia, and the country's national flower, Bermudiana. There are also unique reptiles, such as the Bermuda skink. And here, in this wildlife refuge, elegant tropic birds ride the winds. They come to nest on these cliffs and to rear their young. And it's here too where Bermuda's most remarkable conservation success story unfolded. A unique kind of petrel called the cahau was endemic to the islands, but introduced pigs, cats and rodents and habitat clearance caused the population to be decimated. And by the 1620s, the species was thought to be extinct. 330 years passed, but dramatically, in 1951, 18 surviving pairs were discovered on the most remote of Bermuda's offshore islands, and the species has been intensively conserved ever since. The global population of Cahouse is now 250 individuals and climbing. I was invited to join the conservation team and to follow their efforts monitoring the nesting colonies of the cahau. Jeremy Maderos 
kindly took me to the offshore nest sites on the remote outlying islands. Dozens of chicks fledge on Bermuda's outlying islands each year. And Jeremy and his colleagues monitor the health of all of the chicks. The increasing numbers make the future look bright for the species once more. This recovery story offers hope that remnant populations of other long-lost species across the globe may survive in remote refuges and may similarly be saved from extinction. The conservationists also monitor the nests of the elegant tropic birds, which the Bermudians have appropriately named the longtail. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's quite a fat little thing. Absolutely. He looks very, very well fed. Um, it's in good shape, good condition. Okay, go. we'll just get him oh, in it. Yeah. There he is. Great. Yeah, he's actually very heavy for his size and for his age. He's basically gone from about a 38 gram, you know, at, at hatching weight. Uh, he's, he's, you know, gone from that up to almost 200 grams in, in just over two weeks. That's so incredible. he's really, uh, you know, developing very fast. And that's a good sign that uh, there's plenty of food out in the ocean and 19.7 millimeters. Okay, so yeah, he's in very good shape. Uh, he's developing fast, wow. and I'll be probably um, weighing and measuring him about uh, once or twice a week until he fledges out to sea. And this is part of a long-term growth study uh, for the species, because every year you can tell a bit about the health of the ocean by looking at how fast yeah. these are developing. There, it's like a yeah. canary in a coal mine. It helps to determine the whole health of the ocean. The successful conservation efforts on Bermuda are truly inspiring. And the restoration of the natural habitat in this living museum is key to the future of the biodiversity of the territory. For although Bermuda is famed for world-class beaches and beautiful waters, it's really the unique wildlife that makes Bermuda truly special. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini-documentaries possible.